Hi guys and welcome to Thankful Thursday again with myself, Kel, and also Rachel as usual. So this week the channel has been looking specifically at the eating disorder bulimia nervosa and today Rachel and I are going to be looking at risk factors in developing an eating disorder. Now I think this is one of those how long is a piece of string questions because there are just so many possible answers to this question and if you ask 10 people what caused their eating disorder, you're probably going to get eight different answers. When I talk about this kind of topic of risk factors, the reason people develop eating disorders, I generally see that we have kind of building blocks towards developing an eating disorder and then we have a final triggering factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list some of the things that might contribute towards people developing an eating disorder. But what I also want to say is that it would be unusual for one of these issues on their own to cause somebody to develop an eating disorder. Like I said, you get like building blocks of issues and that's unstable and then a triggering factor kind of comes and knocks over all those issues and you develop an eating disorder. And you'll find that there's kind of crossover between what people struggle with. So say two of these issues were true for me and two of them were true for Rachel and two of them were true for Felicia and three of them were true for you then there's going to be overlap one of mine might be the same as Rachel's and the other one of mine might be the same as yours but the other ones won't be so hopefully that kind of makes a little bit of sense but anyway if we start at the beginning there is evidence to suggest that one risk factor in developing an eating disorder is a genetic predisposition. That is, your body is predisposed, pre-programmed to be inclined towards developing an eating disorder. And of course, if you've got that, there's nothing you can do about that. And as far as I know, I don't think there is a specific test that you can go to your doctor and ask for either. But that is definitely um, believed to be one risk factor, along with particular personality types. So issues such as perfectionism, obsessive compulsive type behaviours. Um, with bulimia specifically there's thought to be issues with kind of impulse control, um, low self-esteem, low self-worth and of course there's going to be the issue of poor body image in there as well and that's something I try not to link eating disorders to too much. But it does play a small part or else you wouldn't have got the idea it's come from somewhere. And I think the small part it plays is in that if you feel badly about yourself as a person, you can't really change who you in your head are, that just is who you are. But you can change your appearance, you can make physical changes, you can gain weight or lose weight or whatever. So I think that's one way in which um, body image plays a part in eating disorders. It's kind of this view that our appearance is based upon success and things like that as well. So other issues might be divorce, death in the family, friend, any type of abuse, bullying, stress at work, at college, at university, just general levels of stress if you're the type of person that worries a lot, that's again going back to type, kind of the personality idea. Um, if somebody in your family has had an eating disorder or especially had the same eating disorder, so had bulimia, then you could be observing those behaviours and again there's also might be a genetic kind of factor there. Other types of addiction both in your family and in yourself are thought to lead to um, kind of be a risk factor for developing eating disorders. Um, what am I missing? I feel like I've missed something out. So that's just kind of an all-encompassing few ideas of mine and I'm absolutely sure there's more so if you can think of more then put those in the box down the bottom and I'm sure I've missed like tons of reasons. Um, one of the reason I wanted to talk about in this video of why people might develop um, 
bulimia is because of a history of anorexia. So about half of people who have anorexia at some point during the course of their illness or recovery also develop bulimia nervosa as well. And I suppose really I was one of those people and it was never written on my medical records or my psychiatrist never said this as far as I'm aware. But during my recovery I certainly did start to binge and they weren't huge binges which would be typical of bulimia but they were more than a meal's worth and more than anybody would have expected me to kind of eat on my meal plan and I would also purge that as well and I looked at this issue when I was kind of going through that process because I wanted to be um, sort of in control of my recovering and I didn't want to end up jumping from one eating disorder to another which is quite easy to do if you're not dealing with those underlying causes like anxiety and stress and bullying and all of those other things I already mentioned and I kind of have an idea and it's not something I've kind of read around to see if it's been suggested or proven by anybody else but I think that in my case my anorexia was a lot about being in control and I know that's quite stereotypical but it was also true and it wasn't just of my food I was the type of person when I was suffering with my eating disorder and I, I like to have absolute control over everything that was over my food my weight and also in terms of being quite obsessive compulsive and being overly organized and not liking any change at all and everything had to be exactly my way and I was really controlling in that sense and when I started to recover I kind of started to let go of that a little bit and I kind of just started to let things flow a little bit more and I think in a way that was what led to me to me developing kind of bulimic tendencies was in that letting go and it kind of went a bit too far and I started binging and purging and I think that was partly because my body was like wow she's eating look let's get all these nutrients why I can and then I was purging because I felt really guilty about that but I also think it was that sense of letting go and sort of not in a very conscious level, more of a subconscious level, but I was letting go and you know that was the opposite to my anorexia and it was kind of trying to find the balance between I can have absolutely anything I want and I'm absolutely having nothing and um, so I think that that's how for me at least anorexia and bulimia came intertwined if you like. And I'm sure that many people have different experiences of this, especially with half of people having suffered with anorexia having developed bulimia. But I just kind of wanted to put that out there because that was something I thought was quite significant. And if you can kind of be conscious when you're develop when you're recovering from anorexia that you're not developing bulimia by allowing yourself that freedom but by being conscious that there is an end point to where that stops being freedom and it's developing another eating disorder. So I'm not sure how long this video has been but I'm probably getting close to the end of the time so I'm going to leave it there I think and I'll see you all next week guys. Bye.